makes me want to be a Dapper Dan man. <laughs> see, I know some of you didn't see the movie, so you didn't get it right. I invite you, if you're able, to stand and look on the back of your order of service as we have our gospel reading this morning from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 8. This is from the New Revised Standard. Jesus says a lot of this in John's Gospel, if you've ever read John's Gospel much. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper keeps the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they didn't understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. The gospel of our Lord for the people of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I heard a sermon one time that that said sheep are dumb, defenseless, and dirty. So if you're bored during my sermon, you can think about that more. When you spoke my name, Because when you spoke my name, oh, I swear the angels sang. Peace came and stole my shame when you spoke my name. I can hardly speak knowing you know me. Thank God I am free. Now my world has completely come undone. For I can hear the sun calling out my name. When I was a little kid... And I'm sure some of you had similar experiences. During the summers, you would leave the house early that morning. You might come home for lunch. Just kind of depends where you ended up. If you didn't eat at your house, you ate at one of your friend's houses for lunch. But I remember saying to my mom all the time, I'll see you when the sun goes down. We stayed kind of around. My parents, I didn't realize what they were doing, but we lived in four separate houses within two years of each other and all were in less than a mile of each other out of plantation and ridgewood and so there was this baseball field where there's now apartments don't you just hate that they paved paradise and put up with apartments um i just had to say that thanks but we would leave and we'd be at this field we'd go to so-and-so's house for lunch or whatever but but mom knew when it got got late we'd be home And if by chance we weren't home, you'd get this. John! John! Shh, we just pretend we don't hear. John David! And I'm headed home. Because any time that second name came uttering, I knew I was either in trouble or in trouble. There's something about hearing your name called. It was a lady by the name of Mary Hendrick. I got to know Mary when I was pastor at Calvary, but before I ever got to Calvary, I received a letter in the mail from Mary. It had a clipping from the Clarion Ledger. A few years back when I was pastoring there, Dante Walker had been a star athlete at Clinton High School and had played football at Mississippi State, only have an injury and some other issues uh, take him off the field his senior year, and he was trying to get into the NFL. And he was living a little bed and breakfast that one of our church members in Centerville owned. I know you find it hard to believe there's a bed and breakfast in Centerville, but there was until it burned down. And he had no place to live and was still training with a couple of coaches there in Centerville. And so... I went over to, to the house where Jackie was, and I said, Jackie, where's Dante? And she said, he's around back trying to get some of his stuff. And I went back there, and I said, Dante. He said, yeah, Brother John. I said, uh, I understand you don't have a place to live now. And he goes, yeah, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, will you come live with us? 
He said, I can't live with y'all. I said, yeah, you can. We've got a, they have a prophet's cove at the back of the parsonage, which is a little efficiency apartment. There were some people that weren't glad that he was living there, but I didn't really care what they thought. What I thought was it was the right thing to do. And so we called his name, and he came and lived with us. Rick Cleveland did a story on, it, on that in the paper. And Mary saw that. Mary's husband was the first pediatrician in Jackson to see African-American babies, and he did so in the early 60s. She sent me a letter saying how much she was impressed by my family, myself, and Dante, and the fact that we allowed him to come live with us. Mary lives out at the Blake now, and her eyesight's not very good, and I went out to visit her a couple of weeks ago. And I woke her up from a nap because one time I went and didn't wake her up. She got all mad at me. So I said, well, this time I'll wake her up. And so I knocked on the door, and she was asleep on a little day bed. And I knocked a little louder. I said, Mary, Mary. Her eyes opened up. I said, how you doing? She goes, who is that? And I started talking to her, and she said, I knew it was you. I could hear your voice when you spoke my name. There's something about speaking a name. Think about it. Even the folks on television got it right with cheers. Hey, don't you want to go where everybody knows your name? Huh? Where you're welcome, where you can be you? Absolutely. We have nicknames, some of us. I call my daughter Fred, for whatever reason, I just call her Fred. Grant, call him G Money, and Elliot is known as L Train. But there are some nicknames that aren't very good for people. I'll give you one. You know, kids can be really cruel to one another, especially in junior high school. And there was a guy that, that went to prep with me when I was there, and he was one of my best friends, and we had known each other since sixth grade. And Mike was extremely redheaded and fair-skinned. And his eyes were, were, were somewhat Asian-looking. And so some of the guys there started calling him by a, a very poor choice of nickname. But we were eighth graders. And I remember not really using that nickname around Mike. I might say it with some other guys, but not in front of him. And I remember carpooling home one afternoon, and I looked over at him, and he had tears in his eyes. I said, man, what's wrong? He goes, nothing. So we got home. Lady dropped me off, then she dropped Mike off, and I got on my bike and rode over to his house. I said, really, man, what, what's, what's bothering you? He said, I hate it when people call me that. There are names that we call people that do nothing but tear down and degrade. If I read the gospel, when Jesus speaks to us, he builds us up. He doesn't try to tear us down. It's encouraging to have somebody call your name. It's encouraging to hear somebody say your name with love. The prophets in the Old Testament, they speak to us from their experiences of exile through the ages. And they invite us to hear God's voice again. Have you ever heard God's voice? I don't know that any of us ever heard it in the spiritual sense, but I've heard something that I thought was God speaking to me. The very first time I was 10 years old at First Baptist Church, Pearl, Mississippi, and I'm holding on white knuckle to that pew because something's happening in my soul and I don't know what it is. I remember going home and asking my dad, I said, Dad, I feel like I want to cry, but I'm not sad. What is that? He said, that's God calling you. About eight years later, sitting in Broadmoor, the original. <laughs> a missionary just got through speaking. I to, missionaries were always boring to me growing up. You know, They're cool people, but they can't speak. As a rule. And... Uh, 
But this missionary zone, had me zoned in, and I looked at the girl sitting next to me, who was a very, very close friend, and I said, you know what? I think God's calling me to ministry. And she looked at me, and she goes, you'd be a great youth minister. And boom, that was it. And every place I've moved in my life, Leanne, myself, we have felt God calling us. And the prophets, God spoke to them. Isaiah is one of my favorites. Woe, I'm a person of unclean lips. And the seraphs flew down, and they put these things on his mouth, and his mouth was clean. And he gave him the opportunity to speak, to tell people about God's love. When Christ calls our names, and I want you to hear this, when Christ calls our name, he always speaks of good news. Good news for the poor, for the oppressed. He speaks healing for the sick, healing for the broken. He frees us from people that try to enslave us. He also offers us redemption from sin. And most of all, when he calls our name, he gives us hope. The promise that he is there. The promise that God never leaves. How do you listen enough to discover and experience the good news which Christ has come to proclaim in you and through you? It's not just hearing God's voice calling you, but it's how do you respond? Do you speak with love? Do you offer hope? What arouses your ears? Music? A loved one's whisper in your ear? If you're David Hampton, you like to hear the words, play ball! What do you hear? And when you hear God speaking, what do you do? Do you turn down the volume? Do you turn the amplifier off? Or do you turn it up louder so you can hear more? I want you to think this morning on these three things. Who arouses your ears? What arouses your ears? And why are they aroused? And how can God do that in you? I don't know about you, but I pray every morning, every, every time I can think about that, I would have ears to hear. Jesus said that a lot in the Gospels too. For him who has ears to hear, let him hear. God is speaking. I love what the, the, the UCC church has as their motto, their mantra. God still speaks. The problem is, is our world just gets too darn loud sometimes to hear it. And when that happens, we have to find a safe place where we can listen. As Jessica said this morning, that quiet place where we can intentionally listen. And the single hawk burst into flight, and in the east the whole horizon is in flames. I feel the sun thunder in the sky, I see the sky about the, to rain, and I hear the prairies calling out your name. Where the sacred rivers meet beneath the shadow of the keeper of the plains, I feel the thunder in the sky. I see the sky about the rain, and I hear the prairies calling out your name. The hope that this thirst will not last long, that it will soon drown in the song not sung in vain. And I feel the thunder in the sky, and I see the sky about to rain, and I hear the prairies calling out your name. And I know this thirst will not last long. And I hear the prairies calling out your name. When Jesus was being led into Jerusalem, that fateful week that we call Passion Week, he made the statement, <clears throat> very profound, that if you fail to praise my name, even these very rocks will cry out. 
They were the original Rolling Stones, by the way. <laughs> Even the very rocks will cry out. God has created us. God loves us. God wants to communicate with each of us. Listen. Listen. Listen, children, to a story that was written long ago. Amen.